Hey guys, welcome to Taste This TV. I'm Chef Joe Seminary. Today we are going to do baklava. That's right, you've heard it, baklava. Many people have had it, whether it be in a diner or, or a fancy Mediterranean restaurant or just in the home of friends and family from Greece. This is a dessert that is just delicious. And it's made with Athens Fila dough. If you know anything about this product, folks, you won't want to work with anything else but this, because hands down, this is going to make your dessert a classic memory last for a lifetime. So Athens Fila dough, check them out. And the baklava, you know, I do a couple of things different from my baklava than you might see out there. Technique, uh, I like to have some walnuts that are, that are whole pieces as well. I don't like necessarily everything sort of uh, small and, and, and minced up. And then I do something with the zest. I do I use lemon zest, I use orange zest. I use the outside. Some people use the juice. I don't use the juice until the very end. So there's two phases of the baklava. And I've had it many, many ways all over the world. And I can tell you that there is a, a way where it's just overly too sweet. I mean, baklava is supposed to be sweet, but man, it could be just like, you can't even finish it. You know, a couple of spoons fall in there. My stomach couldn't take that. but. I make it where it's tolerable, you could have a whole piece. And if you wanted to get daring and put an ala mode on the side, you can do that too. Uh, this stuff is really versatile. We're gonna be working with this. We're gonna talk about how many sheets I put down on the bottom, how many sheets I put down the middle, which is important. We only use butter for this recipe. I use unsalted butter. And I think that the whole technique here uh, is really going to have you making baklava my way. So I'm going to hopefully uh, move you on to the to the my side of the world. And the thing is about sugar too is, you know, many recipes, I've seen many chefs use this, they've always put like syrup in their walnuts, they put, you know, uh, granulated sugar. I actually put 10x sugar because I think the 10x sugar really absorbs and sticks to the walnut a lot better. And I think you can coat it a lot better because it's a fine uh, powder as opposed to crystals. So there's just a couple of things that I do different with my baklava that hopefully you'll be able to pick up. So uh, real simple folks, you know, we got some walnuts here, we got uh, orange zest, lemon zest, we got cinnamon, salt, sugar, and it's basically like, you know, four or five ingredients. I, I don't go crazy. I, we're not reinventing the wheel here. I'm just taking what works and making it into the baklava. So why don't we dive into it a little bit. Let's get close with some chopping, some uh, some taking these walnuts. We're gonna be putting them in a blender, which actually you're gonna need like a uh, food processor for this dish. So hopefully we, uh, you'll take heed to some of these ingredients here and really start to mold it into your baklava, my friends. And so let's get started. Okay, so now we're gonna get started on one of my favorite Mediterranean desserts, and that is baklava. Now baklava can only be made with a stellar Fila dough, and today we're going to be using Athens. That's right, this is definitely the Fila dough of choice. I don't use any of this, and the preparation of this is real simple. It comes to you frozen, so what you'll do is just basically open the back. You'll, you'll, you'll find two rolls, right? We only need one for this. And with the knife, you're just going to gently slice the side of it, and this just rolls out. Uh, a lot of times I, I get it like a damp cloth and whenever I'm not using the product, you know, I'll just basically put a damp cloth over it so it doesn't become uh, crispy or flaky anyway. But I got to be honest with you, I usually make this so fast that it, it never gets that way. So right now we're just going to roll it, leave it on um, leave it on the cutting board. We're going to take our walnuts here, which is, which is definitely main thing for this dish. Uh, and you got a, a food processor here. You can use any type of food processor. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the nut inside the food processor. I like to have a mixture of, of really small and big walnuts in there, because I think it's really, you know, a lot of times I have it and the walnuts are like too small, but I, I like to 
taste the walnuts in the block of love. I think it's very important. So we're just gonna fit all of our walnuts here. We're almost there. And that's about kind of where you want it to be. You know, you don't want to go to a fine dust or anything like that. But we're gonna take our walnuts, walk back over to the bowl. And in our bowl, we're gonna throw our walnuts. It helps the oils get released from the walnuts, and that's gonna help the ingredients that we're gonna throw in here stick together as well, which we're gonna do momentarily. All right, now, we got the three ingredients that go on my baklava. Sugar, salt, and cinnamon. Let me just talk to you about the sugar that I use. A lot of people use honey sometimes, and granulated sugar, I do not. I use 10X confectionery sugar because I feel like it coats the walnuts a hell of a lot better. And don't forget to add extra cinnamon because that's what the dish recalls. We're gonna do some lemon zest. This is a microplane, watch your fingers. And we're just gonna get the outside of this orange as you see here. I'd say scrape and turn, scrape and turn, scrape and turn. So you go all the way around, we're also gonna do this. The zest is just basically the outside skin of the orange. It's gonna lend some really great flavor, and in baking, it's really the go-to uh, ingredient for a nice citrus kind of taste, especially with the baklava. We're gonna do this with a orange and a lemon. Now another thing that I wanna to talk to you about when you're doing this, is you wanna make sure that you're using an organic orange an organic lemon. That's very important because sometimes the outside of the lemon or the orange is sprayed with pesticides and the last thing you want to do is start scraping them into your baklava. Now of course this orange is still good to use for the inside of its juice uh, and we may or may not do something with that towards the end of this. But Okay, nevertheless that's one. We got our, these are our Meyer lemons, organic Meyer lemons. And Meyer lemons have an, a unique quality and a fragrance that really you could smell these things from three aisles away in the grocery store. They don't pop up uh, a lot in, in, in many stores. Uh, they're, they're more prevalent around the time of the year in summer. We're just gonna keep going here. These microplanes are really good. I mean, it's, it's, especially if you get one with a handle, that's, that's best. I mean, you could use a box grater, you know, you know, I always say in cooking, there are no rules in cooking and you can totally just use what you have in the kitchen. You know, you can even use a knife if you want and I'll show you that in another show. All right, look, we got everything we need here and we got some good loving over there too. Make sure you tap this out. Now we have all this stuff in here and we're going to give it a gentle uh, mix. And the oils that were released from the uh, from the walnuts are going to help everything adhere to the nuts itself, all the sugar, the salt, the zest. All right. So now, first, what we're going to do is start with the butter. Right. This is unsalted butter. This recipe calls for butter. Don't use olive oil. I know you're going to have to slip on this one. Next, we're gonna roll out our phyllo dough from Athens. And you wanna try to stay with about three sheets on the bottom because it's the first, uh, you know, the first kind of application here. And you wanna press down. How you know you're good is when you start to see the butter come up through the sheet, you know you need to add one more sheet. Now we're gonna take the butter again. Next, what we're gonna do is take a little bit of the mixture. And we just, this is a real easy recipe here, you know, but it tastes so good. All right, that's good. Now we're gonna take another two sheets. I like to stay with two sheets in the middle. Remember, if you go with two more, what you're gonna find the problem is, when it bakes up, it gets too soft and gooey in the middle. And you want this recipe to be crunchy throughout. The only way you can do it is stay with two sheets. Don't forget, butter between each sheet. You know, this the Athens phyllo dough is just incredible for this. It's so versatile. I mean, you could do a meat pie if you wanted to. You know, take the walnuts again. 
and we think we're gonna probably get away with one more layer here, folks. All right, so we got two more sheets. And we're gonna go with the butter again. Real simple recipe, you just gotta kinda not forget to put the butter in between. And don't worry about brushing it. I watch a lot of people uh, do this recipe and they worry about brushing. Look, when it's heated up, the butter's just gonna go everywhere. It's just the law of gravity. It's a grease. It's gonna heat up, it's gonna spread. And last, we're gonna take one more up like this, pat it down, push it up nice, get the ends tucked in. Let's go one more sheet, because I can see that the nuts are coming through the, uh, the feel of dough here. Let's just get one more on there. And then we're gonna go like this with the butter on top. Butter's nice. We're gonna try to get the corners too. What happens is uh, if the butter, if the corners are not butter, they just crisp up, they get burnt. They don't cook at the right uh, even temperature. You're gonna spread that butter out. And now something important here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this up. You have to pre-cut it. And what you're gonna do is cut it just like this, with a sharp knife. Not all the way down. You're gonna go about halfway. And I'll explain when this comes out. Because there's no way that you're gonna be cutting this when it's hot and expect to keep really nice, you know, diagonal pieces on the feel of dough. So make sure you don't go down. And you have to use a really sharp knife for this. This is like one of these dishes you go grab out your, your new knife or really sharpen your knife up. You're gonna see the beauty of this when it comes out. If you have to, you hold your finger down there, no big deal. You notice how my finger stuck to that? If my finger was uh, dipped in cold water, that wouldn't happen. Okay, good. Place it in an oven. We're gonna take this 375 degrees for about 35 minutes, and then we're gonna make the syrup and pour it right on. Okay, so now we're gonna get started with the baklava sauce. Now the baklava sauce is really just a mixture of hot water, honey. In this case, I only use clover honey. Uh, I like a clear honey, not dark, nothing flavored, anything like that. And of course, uh, our sugar of choice is gonna be the 10X confectionery sugar, like I mentioned earlier. I don't really like to use granulated uh, sugar. Uh, we have some juice of an orange, juice of uh, a lemon and really that's uh, that's it we're gonna put everything in here start off with the honey put in our sugar that'll dissolve very quickly you don't really have to mix it all right now we're gonna start with our lemons Lemon juice really gives it a nice, like a nice citrus. Cause you need something to cut through, uh, you know, the feel of dough itself and all, all the sweet, sweetness that you have going on with the almonds and the citrus really break it up nicely. Okay, and always have a strainer here because you wanna make sure that you, you know, you leave out these pits here. Obviously we don't want that in the baklava. Uh, we have our mixture, which is really good. Now we're gonna take uh, our mitt. And as you can see, this looks incredible. Wow, and if you just touch it, it's nice and crispy. Now, really the whole thing with the baklava is, is you obviously wanna make sure it's nice and hot. And we're gonna pour this syrup all over the top and you're gonna to start to si see it sizzle all throughout here. It's gonna sizzle up. Okay, so we got our mixture. We're just gonna go right over the top with it. See that? That's how you make baklava. 
You're not making baklava, folks. Okay? So what you need to do now at this point is actually leave it sitting out room temperature for 24 hours. I doubt mine is going to last that long, but I'm going to cut a piece open maybe with a little ice cream. And this, my friends, is baklava using Athens feel dough pastry. You can't beat it. So that's it for the baklava. And like I said, when you add that hot syrup in the pan, you wanna make sure to kind of let it sit overnight. I do not put it in the refrigerator. Some people do that. I like to leave it out. It's fine to leave out. Leave it out overnight on the stove. Come back to that baby in the morning with some coffee and you're ready for your day, but only with the Athens feel of dough here, my friends. Uh, and that's exactly what I'm using. The taste, the quality, the durability is what you're looking for with this. So thank you for watching this fun-filled episode of Taste This TV. I'm your host, Chef Joe Simonever. Remember, there are no rules in cooking. Taste this.